Welcome to the video where we will discuss leukocyte activation. So we talked about in the last video how uh, leukocytes are recruited. If you have a blood vessel here, and we talked about in great detail how a, uh, a leukocyte, which is a white blood cell, which are cells of your immune system, will exit the vascular system, which will exit the your arteries and vessels, and uh, your veins and they'll come out in out of the vessels and they'll come to where the bacteria is where necrosis is where you know any kind of sliver you know we talked about we ta gave an example if you get a sliver in your hand what will happen with that they'll exit the wall and they'll kind of attack that. We talked about the whole process of them um, getting to this area where they need to be. That's called leukocyte recruitment. Now we're going to talk about once they get there, how do they become active? And I'm going to draw here a cell. And here's the nu nucleus. And on the cell, um, leukocytes have proteins, proteins in their membrane, little receptors if you will. And there, there's a receptor called a toll-like receptor. And this toll-like receptor um, is, is responsible for um, a certain type of uh, uh, ligand, if you will. And on gram-negative bacteria, there are certain classifications of bacteria, but on a gram-negative bacteria, there are uh, little, there are little um, molecules, and these are called endotoxins usually. Sorry, endo. endotoxins and these receptors are kind of bond you know react to that so once this um, ligand this toll-like receptor receives this ligand receives this molecule and binds to it then that activates this uh, leukocyte and there's another type there's um, they're called G proteins. This is a G protein. And G proteins are in the membrane of leukocytes also. And they're the same type of, uh, they're another type of receptor, but the same principle that the microbes, bacteria, uh, you know, this process of, you know, destruction happening to your body, they send out little chemical signals. And these chemi chemical signals, you know, once this action's happening, little signals are being sent out by the bacteria, by byproducts, whatever, and they attach to this G protein receptor, and then that also activates um, this leukocyte. So what happens when a leukocyte is activated? What does, what does that mean? So the once the leukocyte is activated, these are some of the well three main things that happen once the that leukocyte is activated. So here's this leukocyte. Here's the nucleus. This is a leukocyte, a white blood cell, which is a part of your immune system. Once this leukocyte or this white blood cell is activated, what it will do if there's a bacteria over here, for example, it will send out little arms, if you will, pseudopods, they call them. And it will kind of pull this bacteria inside here. And that's what they that's what this that's what's called phagocytosis. Is it will pull this bacteria or this you know whatever it needs to ingest and it will pull it inside itself so it can contain it and some of the production of substances are 
lysosome lysosome enzymes so once that bacteria is inside there's little uh, pockets of enzymes and these lysosomes are inside these lysosomes there's um, enzymes that degrade stuff that kind of break break things up some of those things are reactive oxygen species uh, nitrogen um, species and these reactive oxygen species I think uh, video 11 talks about how these free radicals and these reactive oxygen species can damage ourselves but leukocytes what they do is they produce these reactive oxygen species and these are these are free radicals free radicals and these are a type of free radicals too but these free radicals what happens is um, free radicals is um, for example any kind of atom that has one excess electron in its outer orbit because these electron you know they have electron sh clouds or electron spheres where the electrons reside outside of this atom and they have one extra electron which makes them very 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 unstable and makes them react with all, practically anything so once this bacteria gets inside these lysosomes what they'll do is they'll come and they'll fuse to the the kind of split open and and spit out their these these contents these lysosome enzymes the reactive oxygen species the nitrogen species and they'll spit out this bacteria so let me draw another picture here. So I'm just going to draw the nucleus really small here. And inside you have this bacteria that it engulfed. This is the before and this is after. And then you have these lysosome full of these free radicals types of thing. And what they'll they'll come over and then they'll merge. They'll, you know, open up and spit these ROSs these free radicals inside this bacteria and this free radical will just chew up and destroy this bacteria in into a lot of different parts and into um, the, you know destroy its DNA it will destroy all of its mechanisms and all of its machinery inside and that way this this bacteria won't be able to do any more harm another um, thing that activated leukocytes do is they send out they send out chemical signals too and that helps amplify the inflammation um, process they send out little kind of recruiting signals if you will saying hey you know I'm in the process of fighting off this infection if you're available please please come help you know type of a thing and that amplifies um, you know all these signals that this leukocyte spitting out will will eventually be absorbed and be be used to amplify this signal of of inflammation one of the most important um, aspects of phagocytosis is a process called opsonization and what we talked about if you have a cell here and the nucleus is here and you have a bacteria out here this leukocyte will you know try to bring this bacteria inside itself to kill it now how does this um, leukocyte know what to engulf well there's there's receptors on this cell just like you know the last couple you know concepts we've talked about there's receptors on this cell and once they're activated then they know kind of what to destroy and one of the processes is called opsonization and it, there's there's a little opsonins are um, these little fragments that get deposited on this bacteria let's just say they're Y's upside down Y's there's little uh, fragments that get deposited on these um, 
on this bacteria and then the leukocyte knows that oh hey this guy has got this you know whatever this is has got these opsonins on them so what it will do is it will know that this is a you know this is a structure or a cell or a bacteria that it needs to kill and the most common opsonin is the immunoglobin G and you know we're kind of getting into immunology a little bit here but we can discuss that in future future videos but this IgG um, immunoglobin gets attached to some of these um, IgG is a class of opsonins and these opsonins get attached to this bacteria which signal this leukocyte this leukocyte to engulf whatever it's attached. Opsonins are also floating in the bloodstream so if there's anything in the bloodstream that shouldn't be there it gets coated with these opsonins and these leukocytes know that if you know something's coated with these opsonins then it needs to engulf it, phagocyte, phagocytose it um, and, and destroy that. During this process of phagocytosis and destroying this bacteria, there's a concept that's called leukocyte-induced tissue, tissue injury. And this leukocyte can cause damage to normal cells. So this is damage to normal cells. And how does this happen? Let me actually go down here. Actually, sorry, let me go back up. Um, as this leukocyte here is engulfing this bacteria to digest it and to destroy it, some of these lysosomes that we talked about, these lysosomes that contain these free radicals and these uh, reactive oxygen species and these uh, enzymes that are very potent and will degrade and destroy everything, some of this stuff kind of gets leaked out into the extracellular matrix. Where there's another cell, let's say this is just a normal, a normal cell. And this, and this lysosome or this ROS will come and attack and kill this cell. He's an innocent bystander, and he gets destroyed in this process. Another thing, too, is these leukocytes. Remember, we talked about how it will release, uh, you know, these chemicals that will amplify the signal. Well, that causes more leukocytes to, to come in. And these leukocytes, they're not, you know, they're in the business of, of making sure this bacteria is stopped. And so... In the example, there's an example of tuberculosis where these leukocytes injure uh, injure normal cells, and the, re the once these leukocytes are activated, um, they destroy these normal cells in the process of w while they're destroying these this bacteria, and once these leukocytes are also activated. You can get auto. You can get autoimmune diseases because these activated leukocytes, for some reason, get the wrong signal and they start they start destroying these normal cells. Here, this is a normal cell, and these they start to destroy them. So, these leukocytes can induce tissue injury. So, you know, it begs the question of like inflammation. Anytime I get inflammation, you know, I'm going to, some innocent bystanders are going to get destroyed. And, you know, which is, which is a good thing and a bad thing. You know, if you didn't have inflammation, you know, wounds wouldn't heal, you know, uh, bacteria would, would go unchecked, diseases would go unchecked. So it's kind of a catch-22 of, you know, once you're destroying these bacteria and these harmful agents in your body, you know, normal bystanders, your normal cells are also going to become injured.